Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hey y'all. We're going to, to the next episode of the similitude of Hermes. In this section, Hermes is going to be introduced to the virgins. Yeah, he's about to come in contact with them and have face-to-face -face relations with them. Yeah, actually, Hermes is about to get indoctrinated into the tower himself. He's seen all of these visions and he's about to get put into the tower himself. Yeah, it's pretty excited about him going into the tower and finding out this information. It's kind of exciting. The shepherd of Hermes is going to explain the vision to Hermes. He takes him step by step and explaining it. Uh -huh. I'm telling him about the, the rock. The, the gate. The, um, and this is what we're going to be talking about the name of the Lord. Uh, do we even know the right name to call him? Well, we actually found out the right name to call yeah, him. That's what we're going to talk about in this. We're going to try to find out what is his name and how it is we ought to take up on his name and even what it means to take his name in vain. Yeah, and it actually makes so much sense the discovery that the Lord has given us about his name and uh, it's just it's, it's changing my life just you know over a day or so and we're also going to be talking about baptism and the importance of baptism and what it does for you yep so everybody needs to get baptized we're going to be talking about the fall of satan in this section and and what happened to satan why he's so vengeful against us there's a lot going on in this section we're going to talk about the armor of god and how the armor of god matches up with the 12 virtues yeah and also when the messiah went to fast that, yep. Yeah, that match, matches up with the virtues. We're going well. to cover a lot in this section, guys. It starts off a little bit slow, but y'all stay with us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, we ask you to come out here and pour wisdom on us as we continue to try to learn the Shepherd of Hermes. And we continue to try to relay these messages to the elect and your children. In your son's name we pray, man. Amen. And so be it. All right, y'all. Looks like we're ready to pick up on verse 96. 96. Then those virgins said unto me, That shepherd will not return here today. I said unto them, what then shall I do? They answered, Tarry for him till the evening, if perhaps he may come and speak with thee. But if not, yet thou shalt continue with us till he does come. All right, so remembering what's happening here. The tower has just been completed. They have gotten all of the stones into the tower. They have gotten rid of all of the other stones. They've been, the rejected stones have been cleared away. They've swept the, the tower and they've cleansed the tower. And now uh, Uriel, the shepherd of repentance, is going away now. Where he's going, we don't know. It doesn't tell us where he's going, but he's going away for a period of time. And he's leaving Hermes there with the tower, telling him to stay there. Yeah, and so Hermes is left here with the virgins. And um, he's trying to decide what he will be doing here with them alone. Yeah, we have to remember that Hermes is in some type of vision state. You know, he's he's seeing these individuals. He's not really in a vision. Um, he's actually seeing these these going on with his own eyes. You know, he said the the shepherd told him that he had to become spiritually mature enough to see this stuff from an angel. And so Hermes is, you know, uh, yeah, like you say, he's wondering what's what he's gonna be doing here. Number ninety seven. I said unto them, I will tarry for him till evening, but if he comes not by that time, I will go home and return here again the next morning. Now, this again is Hermes not really understanding what's going on. He believes that, you know, he can maybe call the shots and say, you know, I'm just going to stay here for a little while. And if the guy don't come back, I'm going to go on home to my wife and kids. But the angels, the, these virtues are like, no, we have been assigned to you by the most high. There's no way we're going to let you out of our sight. We have a responsibility, too, and you're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're left there to guard the tower while the angel of repentance is gone, and Hermas is left there with them, and whether he knows it or not, they're not letting him go. No, never. They'll, they'll always be a part of his life, um, Hermas in particular, for the rest of his life and even beyond. 98. They answered me. Thou art delivered unto us, thou mayest not depart from us. I said, Where shall I tarry? Yeah, again, he, he, he doesn't have, he doesn't really, he can't really go anywhere. He, he has to stay with them. These are, these are spiritual beings, remember they represent virtues, and for them to actually leave Hermes' life, 
is, you know, will be detrimental to his health, his future, his salvation, and everything else. 99. They replied, Thou shalt sleep with us as a brother, not as a husband. For thou art our brother, and we are ready from henceforth to dwell with thee. For thou art very dear to us. Now, you know, I give the Father praise and honor for all that we do understand out of Hermas. We've been studying this for a long time, you know, and, you know, a lot of what we've gotten have been through divine inspiration. But, you know, we don't understand everything. And, you know, while they're stressing to Hermas that, you know, he, he is their brother and not their husband, I, I don't know if I understand that part yet. Maybe we'll pray for an answer. We'll get some, some clarification on it. We're going to have to have some kind of divine inspiration or else you know maybe one of the listeners know and would share it with us in the yeah comments. put it in the comments you're right yeah. 100 how be it i was ashamed to continue with them but she that seemed to be the cheapest among them embraced me and began to kiss me and the rest when they saw that i was kissed by her began also to kiss me as a brother and led me about the tower and played with me. I think it is. I think it's one note is that this is the first time that Hermes is um, interacting with them. He's seen him in the vision before uh, dancing around the gate. He saw him carrying stones, but this is the first time that he's actually met them and is actually coming in contact with them. So you can imagine he's a he's a little bit timid around them. He's a little bit shy. They use the word ashamed, but I think shy would be a good word too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Notice that he said Faith came up and gave him a kiss. Faith was the first one that, you know, formally introduced herself to him. And she came up and gave him a big old kiss, you know, representing how Faith is the first um, of the virtues that we must come in contact with. It is the most powerful of the 12 virtues. Without it, we, we can't really expect to, you know, stay around or for the other ones to stay around in our life. And so she comes up in his shyness and his bashfulness. She comes up and embraces him first. Yeah, when I think of, um, you know, her coming up and giving him a kiss, I think sometimes, you know, when you see like the um, the Europeans, the British people give their greeting with a kiss on one side, a uh, kiss on the other. And I think they do it in the Arab nations also we not so here in america we usually give a handshake or a hug yeah. but you know Bro i'm hug, sure yeah. it wasn't you know a passionate kiss it was a, a greeting kiss yeah so, brother yeah. like you said it began to kiss me as a brother and led me about the tower and played with me yeah yeah one on one some of them also sung psalms others made up the course with them but i walked about the tower with them rejoicing silently and seeming to myself to be grown young again. All right, so Hermes is he's steadily getting used to these women being around him. He's steadily getting used to being in their company. He's not really singing with them yet, but he is, you know, kind of playing with them, kind of enjoying himself a little bit, a little bit loosening up, I guess, is what's going on here. Mm -hmm. 102. When the evening came on, I would with forth have gone home, but they withheld me and suffered me not to depart. Wherefore, I continue with them that night near the same tower. Yeah, so the, the, the shepherd of Hermes has gone away. There's nobody around the tower but these 12 guards, these 12 uh, virtues that are guarding the tower and Hermes. And so he's preparing to spend the night there. Um, um, now, when exactly this is taking place, you know, I, don't, I can't say I understand, you know, when this part of the story actually took place in history. But this is a period of time when Hermes is hanging by the tower. So they spread their linen garments upon the ground and placed me in the middle, nor did they anything else, only they prayed. Yeah, so they've placed Hermes in the middle of them, once again, making sure that he can't really go anywhere. And, you know, they're, they're not really sleeping. They're going to spend the whole night praying. Yeah, well, I wonder why he was trying to depart from them so much. Is it that he had to get home for his wife? He had, you know, his wife, she was, you know, a talker or whatever. She was going to, like, what, get him or something or... All right. Why is he trying to get home so bad? Yeah. Um. I. I. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand. You know. Um. Yeah, probably just that he wants to get home to his family. You can imagine if you were in that situation. You know, the shepherd has just left you. He's he's introduced you to these these individuals that you know you you don't really know or whatever. You kind of feel like you're supposed to go home. You know, 
you don't really feel like you're supposed to stay there, um, um, you know, around the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. 104. I also prayed with them without ceasing, nor less than they, who when they saw me pray in that manner, rejoiced greatly, and I continued there with them till the next day. So they're, they're, they're praying, basically uh, meditating, basically spending time with the Father all night long during this during this period here. And again, we don't know how long this period lasts. In Hermes' life, it was overnight, 24 hours. But for the rest of us, you know, it, it, this, this what's going on here could be a year. Hmm. 105. And when we had worshipped God, then the shepherd came and said unto me, You have done no injury to this man. They answered, Ask him. I said unto him, Sir, I have received a great deal of satisfaction in that I have remained with them. Okay, so the shepherd has returned. He's come and he's he's uh, um, talking to the virgins and, and basically asked them how everything went. And apparently everything went well. There were no issues. I couldn't imagine what issues could have happened except Hermes tried to get up and run somewhere. Well, you had said uh, when we were talking about this, this verse um, a few days ago about how the shepherd came back when they worshiped God. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that part did jump out. You know, was it, you know, something to do with the worshiping of the father um, that made them made the shepherd return? That is an interesting point. Um, like I said, we, we do have a little bit of we have more questions than we have answers. Um, but like I said, this is a Bible study that we're doing here. We, we don't know everything. So you guys help us out in the comments. If, if any of this stuff makes more sense to you, feel free to, you know, add your comments down in and down below to help us out. And he said unto me, how did thou sup? I answered, sir, I feasted the whole night upon the words of the Lord. They received thee well then, said he. I said, sir, very well. All right. So, um... Let's talk just again talking about you know basically the the shepherd catching up on on what's going on what's what's really happened. One o seven. He answered, "Will thou now learn what thou desire?" I replied, "Sir, I will." And first, I pray thee that thou shouldest show me all things in the order that I asked thee. All right. So now it's about to get a little bit more interesting as you know he's about to start explaining these these um the vision that Hermes has seen he's about to start explaining the the stones and all of that so he's going to give Hermes the chance to ask some questions too 108 I answered I will do all as thou wouldest have me nor will I hide anything from thee yeah there's a lot of stuff going on here remember this is the angel of repentance he is in charge of all re all of humanity's repentance a very powerful angel um, he is URL. We find out in the, in the uh, Encyclopedia of Angels, and you know he's basically going to going to be the answer guy right now. He's going to tell Hermes what's going on. Going to tell all of us what's going on. All right, praise the Father. I got an answer. Some of the questions that we were asking while we were going through. Do you remember the questions we were asking? Um, I do not remember. Why Hermes wanted to leave. Why did he want to leave, right? Why, Why? did he want to uh, not stay there with the virgins? Right. And what, what was the deal with them kissing him and singing? Yeah, embracing and all that other and stuff. And why was he? Why did he sup on the word of God all night? Yeah, uh-huh. The reason why is because that was Hermes' indoctrination into the tower. Okay, I'm not following you. And so far, the tower had been been built only as a vision. Hermes was just watching this. First he saw it from the church, then he was watching it from the angel. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's time for Hermes to go into the tower. Remember, this was the first time he had been introduced to the virgins. He yeah. So he wasn't in the tower. Yeah, this was the first time he had actual contact with them. So he wasn't in the tower. You have to be carried by the virgins into the tower. So oh, Hermes, okay. He, I see what you're saying. He wasn't in there at all. So Hermes is about to go into the tower. Yeah, and so what he, what it, what happened was, he, so far he's seen the entire vision from the beginning to the end. Remember, they done swept the tower and cleansed it, and it's in perfect shape. Mm -hmm. But it was only in a vision part. And so then the, the, uh, then the shepherd goes away, yeah. and he leaves Hermes there with the virgins. It's kind of going back in time, back into the time of the visions. Back into the time where everybody is being carried into the tower. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And Hermes has to be carried in too. Yeah. And that's why he left him there in the tower. That's why he left him there to walk about the tower with the virgins. Okay, so when they were kissing and embracing, that was sort of like a celebration? No, that was him actually being introduced to the virgins. That was them actually okay, taking a part okay. of his life. They, okay, they actually okay. was coming into his life. That's why Faith came up and kissed him first. Mm-hmm. She became a part of his life first, and then the other ones start coming around. Remember at first, Hermes was a little bit shy. And right. He didn't, he didn't kind of, it took him a little minute. That was him getting used to the fact that he was being carried by these virgins. Into the tower. But it didn't actually say they went into the tower, did it? No, it walked around. It walked, he walked around the tower and, and all of that. It didn't say that he actually went in. Mm-hmm. But he said all night long he walked around the tower. He became part of the tower. He became part of the tower that night. And one of the things, let's see, where, where are the verses here? we got to run because we're about to run out of power here. Verse 96 is when he's actually going over there by the tower. This is the period of time when there was a break in the building of the tower. Remember, the break in the building of the tower was to allow those individuals to go into the tower, to allow them. And so that's what this is. He, he's actually in the break period right now. Hermes is back in the break period right now, and he's being introduced to the virgins. Mm-hmm. So. And that's what he said, the shepherds, the, the shepherds shall not come back tonight. The shepherd is not going to be back tonight, so you're going to tarry with us. Yeah, stay with us. See, now, this is you asked, you asked the question, why was he so interested in going home? Right. Who wants to be carried by these virgins? Remember, this, this, this walk is not, is not something that we're used to being. Think about your own spiritual walk. Right. How you've been carried by the virgins over the last few years. Mm-hmm. How many times did you want to go back home? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Hermes wanted to do. He yeah. wanted to go back to that lifestyle that he had been. That he had been. He wanted to right. get away from these trials. He wanted to get away from all of the stuff that he's learning from the virgins. Because you know, frankly, you know, it ain't the most pleasant thing in the world right. to be carried by the Especially some of these, you know, you know, Faith is a good one. She kind of nice. But what about long suffering? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? What you know? What about you know? Uh, uh, the, the cheerfulness. Who wants yeah, to be self-restraint. Carried? Yeah, all that. Mm-hmm. And verse 98, they're telling Hermes that he has to stay with him, that he's actually being carried by them. If if for some reason they stop carrying him, he's not going to be able to enter into the tower as well. Right. They reply, thou shalt sleep with us as a brother, not as a husband, and thou shalt our brother. We are ready to henceforth to dwell with thee, for thou art dear to us. See, yeah. this... Th- our, the angels are our brothers. If you remember in in um, when you're talking about the feast days, especially atonement and, and tabernacles, it says if you don't perform these feasts, you shall be cut off from your people. Yeah. These angels are our people. The right. angels, the, and those are our brothers. And that's what he's telling them. You are our brother here just because the angels are our brothers. Well, it says, and we are ready to uh, henceforth to dwell with thee for you are our brother. So they were telling him that, yeah, he was a part of they, them. The, yeah. yeah, the angels. They dwelling with him the angels are the are the angels are our brother i mean they're in charge of getting us through this thing but you know once we all get to the other side you know all go to those higher mansions we're going to be walking along with these angelic figures right mm-hmm. you know they, they're going to be a part of our life we're going to be able to see them talk to them and everything okay verse 100 is when he's actually being introduced to the virgins Faith actually comes up and gives him a kiss. Right. Remember in the vision when the church was talking to him and how how she she explained her age and how she, she started off as an old lady. But once she got the news of this, she became regenerated and yeah. became like a young. This is why Hermes is growing young now. Mm, okay, I understand. Yeah, I praise understand. the Father. Yeah, he, this is why Hermes is becoming young now. And where are we at? 102 in the evening the came. Eve, yeah. See, Hermes again is trying to get away from these trials mm-hmm. and he's trying to get back to the old lifestyle but he cannot leave he has right. to go through he is slated to be in the tower and so he and like us you know we plenty of times we wanted to get away from these trials but we have no choice we have to go in we have to be carried by these virgins right. 103 now now they're praying they, they virgins are praying but then you notice in verse 4 I also pray with them without ceasing no less as they and when they saw me praying in this manner they rejoiced greatly this is Hermes actually taking on the person that he should be a person who is learning to pray in the spirit, a person who's learning to pray with these virgins. 
And when and, we worship God, then the shepherd came and said unto you, Have you done any injury to this man? They answered, as I said unto him, Sir, we have received a great deal of satisfaction in that I have remained with them. Yeah, because they asked me, Did you do any injury to them? Did you hurt them? Think of your own spiritual walk. How, I, I hate to use words like rough and hard and yeah, stuff, but yeah. think of how tough it was, yeah. you know? Did, 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 mm, did, did any of these spirits okay. arm you along the wall? Right. Yeah, and so at That's some good. point, at some, this good. is the Lord, at some point, you would have thought they would have been hurting you, yeah. but when you look back in hindsight, you're like, no, they actually helped me. Mm -hmm. They helped me along the way, mm -hmm. you know? And when he said unto me, how did thou sup? I answered, sir, I feasted on all night upon the words of the Lord. He was reading the scripture the whole time. This is Hermes being indoctrinated into the tower. And part of the indoctrination is to get back into the law, read the scripture. And so what he's telling him, he's been reading the scripture. He's been reading the law. He's been understanding what he needs to understand, getting prepared for this tower. Mm -hmm. That's why he says suck nothing on the word of the Lord all night long. For all of this time, that's all he's been doing is supping on the word of the Lord the same way you have. The same way for all of these years. That's all of what you've been doing is reading the scripture. Mm -hmm. You ain't been doing anything else but reading the scripture pretty much. Wow. Yeah, so I believe that's it. I believe I believe we can praise the Lord for giving us that answer. Yeah. You know, we prayed for him and got it. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, over here at Hermes Academy. We're always getting questions about the Third Testament of the Bible. I want to take a minute just to go ahead and familiarize you guys with the Third Testament of the Bible. I'm even going to give you a, a link at the end of this. Uh, some of the points about the Third Testament of the Bible is that it is the third part of the trilogy we know as the Bible. It's broken up into three parts, turns out. You have the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament. And this is what's going to teach us wisdom. Another point to bring out about the Third Testament. Testament, it is the little book promised in Revelations chapter 10. But before we get there, let's look at John chapter 1, which says that God is the Word. When you read John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Let's look at Revelations chapter 10. The first two verses of Revelations chapter 10 is where we get the promise of a new little book. But if you look at close at verse 2, it says, And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. Right? Now let's look over here on further down in Revelations chapter 10 and we see that at the trumpet blast, the seventh trumpet blast, we're supposed to get another little book. Everybody at the seventh trump is going to get the third testament of the Bible in one way or the other. But I'm going to give you a couple of links here. Let me look over here at, at Revelations chapter 19. Verse 11 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. This is the this is the second coming of Yehoshua HaMashiach. This is the second coming of Christ. This is the Messiah coming. This is the day we're all waiting for when the Messiah comes down on his white horse uh, with his angels surrounding him at the seventh trump. But let's look right here at verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God so when the Messiah comes back his name will be called the Word of God and, and why because he's always been known as the Word of God and now that we are getting the third testament of the Bible the completing the trilogy we have him all together we have his three parts we have the love we have the law and now we have the wisdom to where we can get a full understanding of who our father is One oh nine. First of all, sir, said I, tell me what this rock and this gate denote. Harkin said he, this rock and this gate are the Son of God. I replied, sir, how can that be, seeing the rock is old but the gate is new? All right, now we really have to understand this rock here, the, the rock and the gate. They are they are the same, but they are kind of different, and they represent a lot in this story. He says that it represents the Son of God here, but we also know that it represents the Word of God. Going back to John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we find out in other places of the Scripture how the Son of God is the Word made flesh. This, this rock, which was created a long time ago, it represents the church was, was created, you know, like we said, a long time ago. It represents the church, too, 
Um, these individuals were created even before the heavens and the earth were created. Um, the church was, and so that's what that's why the rock is so old is because it was there from the original creation. Um, but then the gate portion of it is is Jehoshua Hamashiach. It was the Christ that came two thousand years ago, and that's what Hermes is knows. He said, "How is the rock seem to be really really old, and the gate seem to be really really new?" Okay. One ten. Here said he, "O foolish man, and understand." The Son of God is indeed more ancient than any creature, insomuch that he was in counsel with his Father at the creation of all things. Yep. So remember the the uh, in Genesis you you read that you know there was a kind of a conversation there. A lot of people have wondered who was the Father talking to when he was saying, "Let him, let us make him in our image." Well, the Son of God was one of the people that was there already. The archangels was was there already. Even Satan was there already. And, you know, that's that's who he was talking to. Even the church. The church was created already. Even these these and the church represents the the um, the, if the church represents us. The church is us. Our spiritual beings were there already, even before the creation of the earth. Yeah, you sit back and think about all these things even the virtues were uh, you know the virgins were uh, most likely there so a lot of things were happening before uh, the earth was filled with the trees and the water and the land and mm -hmm. things. yeah it seems as though well we know that man was probably the last thing created you know as, well, as, as far as the scripture is concerned as far as what we know man was actually the last thing created about 6,000 years ago and the the earth was you know recent to him the earth was created right before he was but there was a lot of other stuff already you know there before even the creation of the earth okay 111 but the gate is therefore new because he appeared in the last days in the fullness of time that they who shall attain unto salvation may by it enter into the kingdom of God. See, no one was allowed into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven before the Christ came, before the Christ was here, before, you know, that, that, that period of time 2,000 years ago. Even people like Moses and Abraham, those guys, they only got to experience paradise, which is different. You know, paradise is something that they were allowed to dwell in until... The Messiah was put on the cross, put in a tomb, and he went back down in the Hades or Sheol or wherever and got these people out. And then they were allowed to go in to the kingdom of heaven. You know, and so even even those people, uh, uh, Seth and, and even Adam, um, they, they couldn't go into the kingdom of God until this gate was created. That's it. I want to think about, uh, my mind thinks to um, Lazarus. Would he have went... He would have went into paradise as well, right? Before, well, I don't know, because he he was brought back to life. Yeah, well, but the time that at the period that he was actually dead, those few days, he was yeah. dead for about four days, I believe. That those days that he was dead, yeah, the only up, the only place he could have went was to paradise. I mean, he could have went to Sheol, he could have went to Hades, but you know, he, he he being being the Messiah's friend, he probably went into paradise. But there was no way he could have went into the kingdom of heaven. Remember that, you know, um, the, the, the father, Yehoshua HaMashiach, is the one who brought the kingdom of heaven down here for us. And it wasn't until, you know, he was put on, put into the cross. He went into to Hades or hell or wherever. He got the keys from, from mm -hmm. Satan. He, he took death from Satan. And then it was after that point that, you know, he, Lazarus and everybody else is allowed to go into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. One twelve. You have seen, said he, those stones which were carried through the gate, how they were placed in the building of the tower, but that those which were not carried through the gate were sent away into their own places. Remembering the elements of the story, how some individuals were uh, carried by the virgins and in through the gate and into the tower, they were handed over to the um the six archangels that built the tower and then they were built in it. But there were some individuals that he's talking about here that were not carried by the virgins that did not go through the gate and how they were taken to a different place. And he's going to explain to them who they are. 113. I answered, sir, I saw it. 
Thus said he, No man shall enter into the kingdom of God, but he who shall take upon him the name of the Son of God. Now this is a significant part here, because notice he's saying, take upon the name of the Son of God. And we read in the scripture that it is through his name that we receive our salvation. It's in, he's, he's going to explain what that means here, and you know, this is a very significant part of the story because there's a lot of people struggling with with the name of God and what it means. You know, there's a lot of people hollering Jesus, 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 when the Bible clearly tells us there will those who will be doing so in the end times hollering Jesus, 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 and that alone will not be saved. It has to be carried by these virgins. They have to go through this gate. And we're going to find out what that means here. Okay. Number 14. What, number 114. For if you would enter into any city, and that city should be accomplished with a wall, and had only one gate, could you enter into that city except by that gate? We haven't really seen any of these type of cities. I know I haven't. But back in this time, all of these cities had huge walls about them. They were always ready for a war, always ready to be invaded. And these walls were, were hundreds, 30, hundreds of, feet, hundreds of feet tall. No way for you to even you know try to climb over these walls. They, they were... I couldn't imagine what they actually look like. The walls of Jericho and all of that kind of stuff. And so what he's telling him here is when you approach one of these cities, you know, there's no way for you to get in except to go through the gate. Mm -hmm. And Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Christ, is the gate. He's the way into the kingdom. Right. 115, I answered, Sir, how could I do otherwise? As therefore said he, there would be no other way of entering into that city but by its gate. So neither can anyone enter into the kingdom of God, but only by the name of his son, who is most dear unto him. Yep, the, the, the son is the word. The, 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 the son of God, I say it again, is the word made flesh. He is the word walking around, and he is most dear to the father. Remember, it's, it's him himself, the, the Christ and the father are one. But when we're talking of what we're talking about here is how we have to enter through the word. We have to enter through the sun in order to get into this in, into this tower. So what we're saying or uh, what you're saying is you can't enter. You can't go to the father except you have the word. Yeah. Um, you know, just calling on some name, you know, it's not really going to get you there. You know, there's. The, the scripture says only by his name shall we be saved but there's like a hundred different names that you could come up to call him you can call you can call him Jesus you can call him Yahushua HaMashiach you can call him the Christ you can call him uh, what else can you call him uh, Yeshua I'm wondering it is there a certain protocol you have to go through in order to get to the Father? You know, there's a certain protocol that there was to get the the stones into the building. You have to go through the virgins. You have to take it over this and, you know, pass it on to this angel. He put it there and like that. Is there a certain protocol that you have to go to get to the Father? Just calling him, you know, saying the name of Jesus is not going to get you to him because he said, you know, even Satan knows my name and, 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 and just calling on his name is definitely not going to get you, you know, into the kingdom of God. Well, and the first thing you have to do is be baptized. And for a lot of people listening to this, you know, you're wondering why, why you're having a hard time reaching your family members, your children or whatever. They have to go in that water first. Until you go in that water and get the spirit born within you, you really have no hope of, of, of uh, coming close to the Father. That is absolutely necessary. That's why... Yehoshua HaMashiach did it as an example for us. That is when, you know, that is when the Christ descended down upon him is, you know, when he actually went through the water. That's when he became one with the Father. So that part is necessary. Now, the next thing is you have to actually read the scripture. You have to go in and understand what it is that, you, that it is that you're believing in. If you just are baptized and then just continue to do, to carry on your life as you've been doing without ever studying what it is that you that 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 you have now partaken in you, you're going to be really close to the heathen with the exception that you're going to have the holy spirit in you you're still going to be doing heathenistic stuff maybe even getting in more trouble now that you have the holy spirit in you 
The other thing that you have to do is you have to become spiritualized, meaning you have to take on a spiritual nature. And some of the things that you could do to do that is uh, partake in, in charitable deeds, um, uh, which is doing stuff for, for other people and, and, and you know, other, other things like that. Um, and, and once you start to do those, then you'll start to notice the father moving in your life. You'll start to notice different things going on. And one and 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 um and for the people who have done a lot of this stuff, you know, so they say, well, I've already been baptized. You know, first of all, you know, and it's kind of a subject change. I say you have to be baptized again. You you need you, we need to be baptized. You know, again, um um, because you know. Yeah, it's one thing to be baptized when you're five years old with no understanding. And, you know, kicking and screaming because they're about to put you in that water. It's another thing to be baptized when you're 23 years old, fully prepared to, uh, ready for the word and ready to receive the Father. Yeah. And then for most of us, when we are baptized at 23, you, you know, years old, we still don't have the word. And the first thing we do is we defile the spirit. The mm -hmm. first thing we do is we make mistakes. And then, you know, whereas that first baptism, you know, actually had this, had, gave us a uh, repentance of our sins and uh, the Spirit of God was born within us. That second baptism is actually going to give us a remission of our sins, a cleansing of our sins, give us a clean state, a clean slate, and get, kind of give us a, a, a new start kind of thing. And so a lot of us, that's going to be necessary in, in this walk. Yeah, yeah, I think you've been baptized a few times. Um, yeah, I, I I think you've been baptized more than me. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> but, you know, and while we're talking about that, you know, Hermes is one book that, that does stress his baptism. And, you know, I would like to bring that out. You know, each each time we are baptized, you know, from my observation, we there's a progression in it. The first time we, we, we gain the Holy Spirit and a lot of our sins go away. Um, like, you know, I used to like to fight. I used to, you know, like to, you know, do, you know, a couple other things. A lot of those sins go away. But the, the second time that I was baptized, and I've noticed this in a lot of people. I've even heard it from a pastor or two. The second time we're baptized, we get a zeal for preaching. We want to go out and we want to start getting into the ministry work. Whereas the first time we were baptized, we just went back and started doing the same old stuff. That then the, the, the became the same old person. The the next time we're baptized, we want to start you know picking up our Bible and start reading and start teaching. The third time we're baptized, we get wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom takes a part of our life, and 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 it's a, and you know we become wise or whatever. And I've heard one time from a from a preacher, the fourth time we get patience. And it kind of goes on. Okay. Like I said, I've heard that once and through my observation, that's what I've seen too. So, you know, I, I want to take the time to encourage, you know, you know, all of the listeners, you know, to, to consider going back and being baptized again. Yeah, and uh, you don't necessarily have to go to a church to be baptized. No, any any believer, any person that's been baptized can can baptize you. You know, shower your tub. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's it, the power is in the water. It's not in the person doing it. You know that that person that's doing it. You know they they have no power at all. They could be an ordained minister. It don't matter. You know it could be your wife. It could be your husband, your child, or your mom or your dad. That part doesn't matter. It's the water itself. You know that you that that actually you know does the work, and so yeah, you you, you know you, symbolizes the cleansing, cleansing, yeah. Yes, yeah, it actually does more than symbolize it. It actually does, it does give you a cleansing. cleansing, yeah. Okay, one sixteen, and he said unto me, "Didst thou see the multitude of those that built that tower?" Sir said I, I saw it. He answered, "All those are the angels, venerable in their dignity." All right. Now, remember in the story, there were six that was in charge of the building, but there were thousands of angels that was there to help him with the building. And those is what he's talking about. Those multitude of people. 117. With those is the Lord encompassed as with a wall. But the gate is the son of God, who is the only way of coming into God. For no man shall go to God, but by his son. Yeah. And, you know, we had, we had a question about this in one of the classes, you know, it, it was saying how some of the individuals were carried by the angels into the tower and they bypassed the 12 virgins. They weren't allowed. They they weren't carried by the virgins into the tower and then they ended up being kicked out because they remained the same. They didn't change. One eighteen. 
Thou sawest also, said he, the six men, and in the middle of them that venerable great man, who walked about the tower and rejected the stones out of the tower. Talking about the Messiah, talking about the second coming of the Father, who comes in and looks at the stones that are in the tower, and remember he struck them with the rod, and you know some of them changed their color, and those stones were rejected. Some of them were kicked out of the tower, and some of them were, um, well, they were kicked out of the tower. Some of them were kicked uh, real far away from the tower. Some even were thrown in the fire. And some of them, you know, were only thrown close to the tower, maybe to be used later on in the building. Sir, said I, I saw them. He answered, that tall man was the son of God, and those six were his angels of most eminent dignity which stand about him on the right hand and on the left. Now, you know, you kind of wonder, you know, if some of these may be translation errors because it's using the Son of God so many times. We understand that the Son of God is that venerable angel that was walking around. The Son of God is the rock. The Son of God is the is the uh, the gate, too. And so um, you kind of wonder, you know, if, it, if it's like, you know, remember when you read, Deut read Deuteronomy, he said, well, you use the word Lord so many times yeah. over in the same verse, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, but, you know, we we are understanding after the tower was built or put together the first time you had the Messiah, the son of God to come back and to look at the, the tower and, you know, the stones that were in it. And he was walking beside the angels. He was walking beside the, the virtues and everybody kind of came came in when he came in that time. Yeah. And the six angels were Michael, Gabriel. Raphael, uh, Uriel. Then it might have been Hanael and Raguel, and you know, there's there's even another one that uh, is mentioned by um, Enoch that I can't remember his names. It's archangels. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions on who the other three archangels were. Um, you remember Satan at one point? What well, Satan was an archangel too. Hmm. He just Satan. His Satan's problem was is that you know he he being the first of the archangels created, he wanted to be the top angel. He always wanted to be the top guy, and and he was you know he was for a while until the father started talking about creating man. Um, if you remember the story, I don't know if you guys heard the story before, but it was like the the father, the creator, had a meeting with all of the archangels. And he asked them if, if, they, if they should create man. And all of the angels applauded, like, yeah, of course you should create man, except Satan. Satan said, no, you shouldn't create man. Of course, he was overridden, outvoted or whatever. The father went ahead and created man. And after the creation of man, the father told all of the archangels to go down and bow before Adam. Michael, Gabriel, Uriel was all supposed to go and bow before Adam, Satan refused to do so. He didn't. He didn't want to, and he did not bow before Adam, and so he disobeyed the Father, and that's what got him kicked out of heaven. Is that he disobeyed the Father and would not bow before Adam? Well, it, and after it was after he got kicked out that he took revenge on Adam, and he's been trying to kill Adam ever since. Even till today, he's still trying to kill. Adam C. Yeah, and that is found out in the um, Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden. Um, and it's found in Enoch and a few other places. You know, you read about that, that story. Yeah. Okay. 120. Of these excellent angels, none come in unto God without him. He added, Whosoever therefore shall not take upon him his name, he should not enter into the kingdom of God. Now, here we come back to this name thing. Now, I guess this is going to be a very important part of this class is his name. Notice he's saying, um, uh, shall not take upon his name, shall not enter into the kingdom of God. And that's what we always hear. The Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is quick to tell us this. The problem with his sermons is he doesn't explain to us what his name is. Mm-hmm. And his name uh, we have established is the word of God. Well, we're going to find out here. He's going to tell us right here what the what the names are um, here. Uh, I think it's, I'm looking like like that at verse 122. But let's go on. OK, verse 121. Then I said, what is this tower? This said he is the church. And what, sir, are these virgins? He said unto me, these are the Holy Spirit's. 
For no man can enter into the kingdom of God except these clothe him with their garments. Now here he is. He's starting to he's starting to tell us about the name here. In verse one twenty, he says, "Whosoever therefore shall not take upon his name shall not enter into the kingdom of God." And then down here in one twenty one, he says, "For no man can enter into the kingdom of God except these clothe him with their garments." This is the name. The twelve virtues are the name of God. Seeing that, it's very, very important. Okay, you know, let, but like, let it, me go back and read this. It's 121 says, And then I said, What is this tower? He said, He is the church. And what, sir, are these virgins? He said unto me, These are the Holy Spirits. For no man can enter into the kingdom of God except these clothe him with their garment. He's going to go on to explain it that... Um, the virgins make up make up the name of Christ. The virgins are his name, and that's what it, that's when we hear that um, nobody can enter into the kingdom of heaven without his name. He's talking about these twelve virtues, and then so you wonder, okay, why is why is the church so confused right now, thinking that you know all you have to do is call on Jesus, all you got to do is say the word J E S U S out of your mouth. And you're going to be raptured and sucked off the planet to some to some place. It is because of the Catholic Church's rejection of the Shepherd of Hermas. This was a second arrow book. The Shepherd of Hermas was known by Paul and all of those guys way back when 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 the the New Testament was being put put together. The Shepherd of the uh, Hermas Hermas was around, and this book was 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 being written. This book should have been included in the King James Version of the Bible. But because the Catholic Church rejected it, now we are ignorant to these facts and we're only finding out now. And that's what the scripture you know, goes on to say. In the end times, knowledge will increase. This is the knowledge that's, that's being increased in this time as we're starting to find out about these 12 virgins. I wonder, does this, these 12 virgins have anything to do with... Uh, it talks about put on the full armor of God. Well, when you when you go in and you look at you know the full armor of God, yeah, let's go look at it right quick. Okay. Ephesians six and eleven. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right, look at 13. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We know truth is one. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, which we, we can pull those up here. Um, and on your feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace gospel of peace and let me pull them up right here okay all right so here they are uh faith self-restraint power long suffering simplicity lack of evil purity cheerfulness trust intelligent harmony and love so where is peace peace would fall somewhere in long suffering mm -hmm. it could fall in um concord concord it could fall in love yep so let's see what else And above all, taking the shield of faith. Yeah, we know that's there. In which we know faith is the, the um, chief. chief of the, the twelve. Wherewith all she shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So those two are the word of God. And in our twelve virtues, where is the word of God? That would be truth. Truth would be the word of God. Mm -hmm. Or understanding one of them, it could be it could be both one or both. Yeah. All right. So okay. yeah, they 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 are they are. It doesn't lift all of the virtues there, but we right. see we see most of them listed there. So yeah, you're right. Well, that's gonna do it for this class. If you got something out of it, go ahead and hit the like button for us. If you have any comments or questions or anything, please leave those below. If this is the first of the similar tools classes that you've had a chance to check out. 
go ahead and and look at the end screens that are showing up and you can find the whole series that we've been working on so far we've completed commands and the first eight similitudes father willing we're going to finish out the whole book of the shepherd of Hermes. so go ahead and hit that bell button so you can see these classes when they come out thanks for watching and stay in the fight